Hi, my name is Matt. I'm one of the service technicians with Worldwide Corals. Today I'm going to show you how to do the maintenance on this 220 gallon water box aquarium. Maintenance on your reef tank is super important for keeping everything happy and healthy. It's like having your dog and cat, taking them to the vet, making sure that they're getting the proper food and nutrition. Same thing with your aquarium. You want to make sure their corals are happy and healthy for a long time, giving your fish the proper nutrition and your, your reef will start to thrive. So we're going to test salinity to match up you know, the water change water with the tank water, make sure there's no temperature swings or salinity swings. We wanna keep the salt around 2.5 to 2.6. Uh, temperature should be around 77 or so degrees. When we make the salt water in the garage, uh, he has a mixing station out there. So we wanna match the salinity to the tank so it doesn't stress out any of the fish or corals. And then he also has a chiller so we can cool down the water since this is Florida and it gets about 100 degrees in the summer. So we have a chiller that runs about 24 hours before I come. So the temperature should be matching up perfectly with the tank. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the base parameters uh, for the tank, make sure everything is in a stable range. Um, I test it, I'm here every other week and then I have Joey do it in between the service at least once and then he always you know shoots me a text message and if we have to adjust any of the dosers we can go ahead and do that basically we're testing the nitrates to see how basically how dirty the water is um, the nitrates should be about uh, on this tank it we, we like to run it about 15 to 20 um, just because it's a huge mix of of different corals um, acros prefer it a little bit cleaner and then your mushrooms and zoas and everything like that prefer it maybe a little bit on the dirty side. Um, so we try to run it right in the middle so that we get the best color of everything. Uh, if the nitrates are too high, we usually have to do a bigger water change. It'll cause um, you know, corals to be unhappy, uh, algae blooms, stuff like that. While that one's sitting there, I'll, I'll do the, the phosphate test here. Um, phosphate is caused from over overfeeding or you know a lot excess of fish waste, not running GFO stuff like that. So um, we'll test this. This should be right around 0 0.03 to 0 0.1. That's where I like to run it for this tank. So if we see that the phosphates are over the you know the limit that we like to run it at, we'll go ahead and change out the GFO. Um, I prefer to use ROA, uh, that seems to do the trick for me and does it pretty quickly. Yeah, so it looks like the nitrates are around 25, so it's basically time to do a water change here. So that's what it is. Usually when I come, we'll do a nice 50 gallon water change and tank should be back up and running like normal. And the phosphates seem to be about 0.1, maybe a tad bit higher than that. So we'll go ahead and change out the ROA as well. We're going to test these three. These are the kind of the building blocks to the growing of the corals. Um, we want everything to be at a stable range. Uh, alkalinity, we run around 8.5 on this tank. Uh, calcium should be 450 to 470. And then magnesium, I usually run about 1450 on this tank. And this one's right at 8.3 on alkalinity. So the doser is doing its job by dosing exactly the amount that we want. So the calcium here, we're about 470, so it's exactly where we, we want it. This is going to provide the calcium to the corals to let the skeletons continue to grow. The magnesium is right around 1420, so that's basically the, the ballpark range that I want to be. Between 1400 and 1500 would be ideal for a tank of a mixed reef. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a 50 gallon water change here. Uh, we'll drop it down about halfway um, to the bottom of that MP40. That's about 50 gallons. Basically, the tank's newer. I would personally recommend changing a lot less, but since this tank has been up for about two years, we change about 50 gallons. Um, that seems to replenish all the trace elements and um, gets the tank back on track with nutrient levels and everything like that. Now, this is the fun part. Usually people want to uh, you know, go to the end of the hose and suck the end of the hose. Um, I find if you make a big U with the hose and uh, fill the water, 
and then basically once it's filled with water there as you can see and literally drop drop the other end and it'll create a siphon to suck it right out of it. If you want another pro tip, don't suck up your fish. If you want more pro tips, call Worldwide Coils. <laughs> I move it there just so that it dissipates the water so when it's coming out of the hose, it doesn't disturb the sand or any of the other corals. So I leave it there while it fills up and I'll move it back to its original place after. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and take out the skimmer cup. We'll clean it out, make sure it's nice and clean, clean the neck of the skimmer so that it's working properly. And so we'll put it back together and get it, get it up and running. So now we're gonna change out the GFO. Um, this has been in here for about two weeks since the last time I was here doing a service and it's about time to get changed. You see this reactor? Um, it's got two sponges and then we put the media in the middle so, and then we pump water through it. So the water comes up down the outside of this little canister here, that you see here, and it goes right through the middle and forces the water back through the media to basically expose the water um, to the media for a little bit longer than it is as if you were to put it in like a media bag or something like that. Um, basically you're forcing the water through the media. Now we'll turn on the GFO reactor. I usually run this GFO reactor for about a minute into a bucket of, so that all the dirty water can, doesn't go into the tank. It'll come out like rust colored. Here it comes. You can see how brown that water is. I don't really, I mean, they say that it's, you could put it directly into the tank, but personally, I don't do that. And then this one just goes right back into the, into the sump. All right, so now we'll be starting the tank back up. Um, we'll start the main pump here, put that into auto. Um, right now I have everything programmed. So when the tank's fully running, everything should be back in auto mode. So we'll let the tank start up. We have the GFO on, we have the heater on auto. Um, so when the probe receives like the temperature, sends it to the apex, if it's uh, below 77, it'll automatically turn the heater on till it hits about 78 degrees. Um, so now that we have the pump on, we'll go ahead and get the skimmer on and the MP40s. The MP40s are just our power heads. Um, I like them because they create a good amount of flow and we don't have any excess wires in the tank. All right, so now that we have the tank all serviced and uh, everything's taken care of, we're just gonna do a final wipe down, basically clean the glass. Um, I use RO water, basically wiping down the glass with RO water and then squeegee it nice and clean and give it a nice, perfect finished look. So that's everything on our 220 gallon maintenance today. Um, if you like what you saw, please give us a like and a subscribe and please leave a comment down, down below. See you next time.